So today we're going to talk about robot offline programming. Now, Dalmia has capabilities to offline program. It has the capability of what we call round loading, meaning that we have the capability to go to the shop floor and take the actual production robot and take that program and upload it into the simulation. We also have the capability to download from the simulation into that production robot. And what's extremely important to us is that both environments are the same, both physically and programmatically. In other words, the virtual robot itself was conceived in CAD. This was designed by somebody in a CAD system, and it is pristine, meaning that all the distances are exact and all the angles are exact. There's no such thing as um, deformation from welds, for example. There's no such thing as casting shift on the joints of the robot. This is a pristine model, unlike the robot that's on the production floor. The robot on the production floor may have been in use for a long time. It may have been crashed into some objects, even just from the manufacturing process, the robot in the real world is not pristine. There are differences. There are differences in the robot and there are differences in the tool that's at the end of the arm of the robot. There are gonna be subtle differences. If somebody had taken the torch on the real robot and ran it into a fixture, that torch is gonna to be bent. Now they can do their best to unbend it, but it will never be as pristine as the one in CAD. So there's going to be some differences between the real objects and the production objects. And that's where calibration comes in. We'll be able to calibrate the virtual work cell so it directly represents the real work cell on the production floor. And these are steps that need to be taken if your intention is to be able to download to that production robot with minimal or no touch-up of that program. And so we're going to talk about offline programming on how to download. We're going to talk about uploading programs. And we're going to talk about calibration. All right, so first let's talk about how to import the translators. The translators come with the software in the form of a 3D XML. These 3D XMLs don't contain any geometry, they just contain the translators. So when you want to use a translator for a universal robot, you need to import the universal translator. If you want to import for a FANUC robot, you need to import the FANUC translator. And the software knows the difference. You won't be able to use a FANUC translator on a universal robot or any other type of robot that it does not support. So the translators are contained inside of the installation software So there's an OLP folder wherever your clientware is located. And once you go into OLP, you'll find translators. And so this is where you can import the individual translators. In this case, it's a FANUC. And we'd select this one and import it. So let's take a look at this FANUC robot. This is the one out of the library, and it has the tool points that I've input, as well as the other attributes, such as the motion profiles. These came from the library and the accuracy profiles. And I created the object frame is just a default object frame. It's set at zero. So what we're going to do first is it's a little backwards intuitive because what we 
want to do is when I download this program to a production robot, I want it to be the same. I want it to have the same program instructions that the robot on the floor would have. So technically, before I start simulating, what I really want to do is upload the program from the production robot. What this allows me to do is to import all of the appropriate robot parameters from that production robot. So when I simulate, I'm using the production parameters, not just the default parameters that come from the robot uh, in the library. So before we begin, I wanna bring your attention to the user assistance manual. The user assistance manual can help you with every aspect of programming robots inside the Delmia software. It can help you with the programming basics and concepts, talk about what's a prerequisite for the translator and what else needs to be installed. Also talks about creating a robot program and importing a robot program. And these are important manuals because as you know, we support 13 different translators at this time. And every robot has different programming constructs. These constructs are different from brand to brand and every translator is different. And what that means is that when you're simulating inside of Delmia, you really need to be aware of what programming constructs are supported by the production robot. If you're using if statements inside the simulation and you try to download it, some robots do not support if statements. So it's important to know what types of instructions are supported by the robot. So when you refer to how to import a robot program, it will review things with you that the robots support. There's also individual OLP manuals for each individual robot brand contained in the user assistance manual. Those manuals will go specifically through individual instructions that are supported and will also cover instructions that are not supported by the individual translator that you're trying to use. So importing a robot program, it's important to know what's supported and what's not supported for individual instructions. It's also important to know what programming styles and what controller applications are installed on the robot. FANUC robots have their own TPE environment that they use to support applications such as arc welding. So arc welding statements are supported by FANUC robots that contain the TPE arc software that's installed on the actual robot controller. And Delmia translators also support these commands. What you're looking at is a robot controller dump. This is a dump of all the programs from the FANUC robot on the production floor. And these are the files that will contain the specific programming attributes from that robot. Be advised though that some parameters in some robots cannot be accessed by the translator. Some values for attributes like uTool and uFrame are contained within registers inside of the robot controller, which if they can't be accessed by the translator, would mean that you would need to go into the controller and physically write down what those attributes are and then come into the simulation and populate those attributes inside the robot. So I'll give you an example of that. All right. So here's my robot with its attributes and I'm going to import a robot program from a FANUC. Okay, so I've, I've pointed to that directory. Some of these files are binary and some of them are ASCII files. We're interested in ASCII files from the controller. So the file that I'm gonna read for a program is a .ls file. Files can be converted from .tp 
which is a teach pendant compiled program to a .ls inside of the FANUC controller. That functionality needs to have the appropriate tools installed on the controller to do so. So here's my program, and I'm gonna hit next. And it's going to show me what the degree of freedom mapping is. If I had a tool positioner or a robot on a gantry, it would show me in which position that degree of freedom exists. So if there's any profiles, I can delete them or not. I can update the device parameters from this controller backup. And I can create home positions. So typically you will see warnings. Warnings can appear for different reasons. Sometimes it could be information that's not readily available. And sometimes it can be a command that it doesn't understand. Typically, if the translator does not understand a command, it will bring it across, but it will use it as a comment. If information is not available, it will tell you inside of the complaints. So the warnings that I received is that there's information for the motion group that has not been defined in a register. So I need to make that available to the robot. So I'll click next. It tells me that there's a U frame that's been defined. This object frame has no value here. So this has not been defined and I need to discover what that, uh, what the definition is of that as well as the tool point. So I imported the robot program. And as you can see, it's the whole program is based around the base of the robot. Now, I know this is not correct. All right, let's take a look at this U tool value. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the U tool values that I got off the robot controller in the shop. Since these are the values that were used by the program in the real robot, I have to use them and apply them to the uploaded program. And since it's also using a U frame value that is not zero, I'm going to type in the values of the U frame that I got from the robot controller. Also, if you want these values to be applied to the program that you're uploading, they need to be active. So you need to set that U tool and that U frame as active for it to be applied to the program that's being uploaded. Now I'm going to delete the uploaded task that I created along with the tag group that was created on the upload. Now that I have the proper U tool and U frame values input into the virtual robot, I'm going to execute my upload again. So here's my uploaded program. As we can see, the robot locations are actually on the seam, so it looks really good. Okay, so we've done an upload. Now let's do a comparison on some of the parameters from both the robots. Let's compare the tool point of the virtual robot to the tool point of the actual robot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drive this robot to a home position. And I'm gonna look at both of the tool points just to see what the delta is. So as you can see, my tool point for the CAD object is at the end and the uploaded or the, uh, the tool point I input from the real robot is over here. Now torches are, torches are configurable with different sized necks. They have different lengths. They have different angles. 
And you can pretty much build them piece by piece. And so you have to really pay close attention to what's on the end of the actual robot when you're modeling it and when you're simulating it. So what I could do now is I could take this torch and I can put it into SOLIDWORKS and I can make adjustments on it so the tool points are equal. Then what I could do is I can use the calibrating a tool point. So calibrating a tool point will tell us what that delta is on those two points. So this chapter is really important for calibrating the tool. But you also have to calibrate the location of the workpiece. That control arm sitting on the, on the workbench, for example, needs to be calibrated. And there's different methods for calibrating objects in the virtual world. There's a six-point calibration that allows you to compare six points from the real robot to six points from the virtual robot and then be able to put them in line with each other. And if your robot's on a positioner, there's calibration tools to, posi to calibrate the positioner as well for the robot. Robot signature calibration allows you to calculate the joint lengths, the joint angles, and the joint offsets of the actual robot and apply them to the virtual robot. And so all of these different objects need to be considered and their sizes and locations need to be equal in order for this to be uploadable and downloadable.